Hello, and welcome to our video on alkalosis. Your blood is made up of acids and bases. The amount of acids and bases in your blood can be measured on a pH scale. It's important to maintain the correct balance between acids and bases. Even a slight change can cause major health problems. Normally, your blood should have a slightly higher amount of bases than acids. Alkalosis occurs when your body has too many bases. It can occur due to decreased blood levels of carbon dioxide, which is an acid. It can also occur due to increased blood levels of bicarbonate, which is a base. This condition may also be related to other underlying health issues, such as low potassium or hypokalemia. The earlier it's detected and treated, the better the outcome is. Alkalosis is excessive blood alkalinity caused by an overabundance of bicarbonate in the blood or a loss of acid from the blood. Metabolic alkalosis or by a low level of carbon dioxide in the blood that results from rapid or deep breathing. Respiratory alkalosis People may experience irritability, muscle twitching, muscle cramps, or even muscle spasms. Blood is tested to diagnose alkalosis. Metabolic alkalosis is treated by replacing water and mineral salts such as sodium and potassium, electrolytes, and correcting the cause. Respiratory alkalosis is treated by correcting the cause. Blood pH, acidity and alkalinity of any solution, including blood, is indicated on the pH scale, which ranges from 0, strongly acidic, to 14, strongly basic or alkaline. A pH of 7.0 in the middle of this scale is neutral. Blood is normally slightly basic, with a normal pH range of 7.35 to 7.45. Usually, the body maintains the pH of blood close to 7.40. pH is an important quantity that reflects the chemical conditions of a solution. The pH can control the availability of nutrients, biological functions, microbial activity, and the behavior of chemicals. Because of this, monitoring or controlling the pH of soil, water, and food, or beverage products, is important for a wide range of applications. The pH value of food is a direct function of the free hydrogen ions present in that food. Acids present in food release free hydrogen ions. The hydrogen ions give acid food their distinctive sour flavor. Thus, pH may be defined as a measure of free acidity. More precisely, pH is defined as the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration. The range of pH extends from 0 to 14. A pH value of 7 is neutral, because pure water has a pH value of exactly 7. Values lower than 7 are acidic. Values greater than 7 are basic or alkaline. The blood needs the right balance of acidic and basic alkaline compounds to function properly. This is called the acid-base balance. The kidneys and lungs work to maintain the acid-base balance. Even slight variations from the normal range can have significant impacts on the vital organs. Acid and alkaline levels are measured on a pH scale. An increase in acidity causes pH levels to fall. An increase in alkaline causes pH levels to rise. When the levels of acid in the blood are too high, it's called acidosis. When the blood is too alkaline, it's called alkalosis. If too much bicarbonate in the blood, a loss of acid from the blood, or a low level of carbon dioxide in the blood overwhelms the body's acid-base control system, the blood will become alkalotic. Alkalosis is categorized depending on its primary cause as either metabolic or respiratory. Increased bicarbonate and decrease in acid. Your kidneys maintain the body's pH to ensure it doesn't become too alkaline. Some circumstances can cause your blood pH to shift dramatically and lead to alkalosis. A common cause of alkalosis is digestive problems. Excessive vomiting can eliminate too much of the body's acid, causing an imbalance. Conditions affecting your heart, liver, or kidneys can also alter your alkalinity. This is one of two types of alkalosis. The imbalance in bicarbonate is referred to as metabolic alkalosis. Compensatory mechanism for metabolic alkalosis involves slowed breathing by the lungs to increase serum carbon dioxide, a condition leaning towards respiratory acidosis. 
As respiratory acidosis often accompanies the compensation for metabolic alkalosis, and vice versa, a delicate balance is created between these two conditions. A lack of carbon dioxide. When you don't have enough carbon dioxide in your bloodstream, you've developed respiratory alkalosis. This is typically the result of hyperventilation and other events that make you breathe very quickly and very deeply. Other causes for respiratory alkalosis include fever, high altitudes, low oxygen, lung disease, and liver disease. Respiratory alkalosis is caused by hyperventilation, resulting in a loss of CO2. Compensatory mechanisms for this include the release of hydrogen ion from tissue buffers and excretion of bicarbonate in the kidneys, both of which lower blood pH. Hyperventilation-induced alkalosis can be seen in several deadly central nervous system diseases, such as strokes or Rett syndrome. The main four types of alkalosis are respiratory alkalosis, metabolic alkalosis, hypochloremic alkalosis, and hypokalemic alkalosis. Respiratory alkalosis. Respiratory alkalosis occurs when there isn't enough carbon dioxide in your bloodstream. It's often caused by hyperventilation, which commonly occurs with anxiety, high fever, lack of oxygen, salicylate poisoning, being in high altitudes, liver disease, and lung disease. The most common cause of hyperventilation, and thus respiratory alkalosis, is anxiety. Other causes of hyperventilation and consequent respiratory alkalosis include pain, low levels of oxygen in the blood, fever, and aspirin overdose, which can also cause metabolic acidosis. Metabolic alkalosis. Metabolic alkalosis develops when your body loses too much acid or gains too much base. This can be attributed to excessive vomiting, which causes electrolyte loss, overuse of diuretics, adrenal disease, a large loss of potassium or sodium in a short amount of time, antacids, accidental ingestion of bicarbonate, which can be found in baking soda, laxatives, and alcohol abuse. For example, stomach acid is lost during periods of prolonged vomiting or when stomach acids are suctioned with a stomach tube, as is sometimes done in hospitals. In rare cases, metabolic alkalosis develops in a person who has ingested too much base from substances such as baking soda, bicarbonate of soda. In addition, metabolic alkalosis can develop when excessive loss of fluids and electrolytes, such as sodium or potassium, affects the kidney's ability to maintain the blood's acid-base balance. Hypochloremic alkalosis Hypochloremic alkalosis occurs when there's a significant decline of chloride in the body. This can be due to prolonged vomiting or sweating. Chloride is an important chemical needed to maintain balance in bodily fluids, and it's an essential part of the body's digestive fluids. Hypokalemic alkalosis Hypokalemic alkalosis occurs when the body lacks the normal amount of the mineral potassium. People normally get potassium from food, but not eating enough of it is rarely the cause of a potassium deficiency. Kidney disease, excessive sweating, and diarrhea are just a few ways people can lose too much potassium. Potassium is essential to the proper functioning of the heart, kidneys, muscles, nervous system, and digestive system. For instance, loss of potassium sufficient to cause metabolic alkalosis may result from an overactive adrenal gland or the use of diuretics, for example, thiazides, furosemide, or ethacrinic acid. Metabolic alkalosis is usually accompanied by low blood potassium concentration causing, for example, muscular weakness, muscle pain, and muscle cramps from disturbed function of the skeletal muscles and muscle spasms from disturbed function of smooth muscles. It may also cause low blood calcium concentration. As the blood pH increases, blood transport proteins, such as albumin, become more ionized into anions. This causes the free calcium present in blood to bind more strongly with albumin. If severe, it may cause tetany. Early Symptoms Symptoms of alkalosis can vary. In the early stages of the condition, you may have nausea, numbness, prolonged muscle spasms, muscle twitching, or hand tremors. Serious Symptoms If alkalosis isn't treated right away, severe symptoms can develop. These symptoms could lead to shock or coma, dizziness, difficulty breathing, confusion, stupor, or coma.
The symptoms of alkalosis mimic symptoms of some other conditions. The first step in diagnosing alkalosis is a physical exam. Your doctor will evaluate your symptoms before moving on to any invasive tests. If there are any urgent symptoms, such as hyperventilation, your doctor will treat those first before any complications arise. Common tests for this include urinalysis, urine pH level tests, basic metabolic panels, and arterial blood gas analysis. The aim when treating alkalosis is to treat the cause, not just the imbalance. After the initial symptoms are treated, your doctor will determine the cause and begin a more in-depth treatment process. The treatment plan will depend on the cause of the alkalosis. The carbon dioxide level needs to return to normal if the person has respiratory alkalosis. If they have rapid breathing caused by anxiety, taking slow, deep breaths can often improve symptoms and regulate your oxygen level. If tests reveal that the person has a low oxygen level, you will need to receive oxygen through a mask more than likely. If the rapid breathing is caused by pain, then treating the pain will help bring respiratory rate back to normal and improve the symptoms. If alkalosis is caused by a loss of chemicals, such as chloride or potassium, the patient will be prescribed medications or supplements to replace those chemicals. Some cases of alkalosis result from an electrolyte imbalance, which may be corrected by drinking plenty of fluids or drinks that contain electrolytes. If the person has an advanced case of electrolyte imbalance, it will need to be treated in the hospital. Most people recover from alkalosis once they receive treatment. Treating metabolic alkalosis. Plenty of water and electrolytes to balance the blood pH levels. This can be done through drinks containing sodium and potassium. Treating respiratory alkalosis. Breathing and getting enough oxygen. Slow down the breathing, breathing calmly, and easing anxiety will help to restore the oxygen. Reduce the risk for developing alkalosis by maintaining good health, eating a healthy diet, and staying hydrated. Choosing foods high in nutrients and potassium can help combat electrolyte deficiencies. Nutrients and potassium are primarily found in fruits and vegetables, as well as some other foods including carrots, bananas, milk, beans, spinach, and bran. Here are some steps people can take to prevent dehydration. Drinking 8 to 10 glasses of water per day. Drinking water before, during, and after exercise. Using electrolyte replacement drinks for high-intensity exercise. Avoiding sodas or juices which have a high sugar content and can make dehydration worse. Limiting caffeine, which is found in sodas, teas, and coffee. It's important to remember that you're already dehydrated if you feel thirsty. Dehydration can also occur rapidly if you lose a lot of electrolytes. This can happen when you're vomiting from something like the flu. If you cannot keep potassium-rich foods in your stomach, make sure you still drink adequate fluids such as water, sports drinks, and other broth-based soups. Thank you for watching, and have a great day.